You're watching Face to Face, I'm your host Tim Vince and I, I say every time I'm very pleased to see my guests but uh, my very good friend Dr Richard Scott and um, Richard it's rare that I can pin you down because you're such a busy such a busy chap but um, uh, uh, Richard you've been in the NHS for how many years? Do you know Tim I can't believe it but 40 years we've qualified we had a reunion at medical school recently so yeah. 40 years a doctor. Yeah that is long amazing time. and um, I know that you worked in in Africa you, you've worked as a GP mm. but firstly as I ask all my guests how, how, did, how did you start your Christian journey? Thanks. Tell us the story. Do you know it's a, it's a, it's a story I'll, I'll, I'll summarise it but I remember my parents weren't Christians and and we, we lived in, in, in Cheshire. And I remember they used to drop me and my sister off at Sunday school and then buzzed off in the Cortina in the other direction. And I, even as a kid, I thought, this is strange. So the first deal I ever did with my parents, when I'm five, can I stop going to, to church? So they said, yeah, you've got to go till you're five. So at five, and that was it. Kicked God into touch or so I thought. So you're quite clever to be able to negotiate before <laughs> you're five years old. I, I couldn't get away with it before five, but five was the end of me and God, so I thought. He, God moved us down to, uh, to Surrey, hence I lost my Mancunian accent, mm. um, and went to a school I didn't particularly want to go to. Turns out it's got this great Christian union. So, um, do you know, one-fifth of this grammar school in, in Kingston, Surrey, go on camps every year, one-fifth, so 100 out of 500. Not for the, the Christian stuff particularly, although some were Christians, for the football, for the swimming. Deal was you had to go to the evening meeting, big sweaty marquee. I loved it, loved the music, never listened to the talk. Mm. So in my third camp, I was 14, halfway through, suddenly, and it must have been God, strong sense, he said, listen to the talk tonight. And I thought, well, all right, I haven't listened before, I'll give it a go. Mm -hmm. So I did, and what the bloke said made sense. He said, boys do things wrong, and it upsets God who's perfect. And I thought, yeah, if there is a God, I get that, that's logical, no faith, logic. And we can't sort it out because we're the problem. So God sorted it out, I went, did he? Because I hadn't been listening the last three years, how did he do that? And he explained how Jesus took our sins, separating us from God, on his body on the cross, which yeah. is why he said, didn't he, briefly, my yeah. God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. Allowing me to be with God forever. And I thought, my goodness, that's reasonable. In fact, yes. that's more than reasonable, that's very decent. Yes. But more than that, I'd, I'd heard that Christians needed faith because they were use, useless and weak as a crutch in life. Mm. But how come all the sportsmen, and I was into sport in my school, virtually all the sportsmen were Christians. There they were, at the camp. That can't be true. I know, I'll give it a go, because the theory sounded good, the practice sounded good. So I gave it a go until I was 18. Yeah. 18, went to medical school in London, very busy, girls, sport, medicine, took my eye off God completely, bad mistake. Fast forward to 26, I'm a young surgeon, used to take the veins out of people's legs for coronary artery bypass grafts at Papworth wow. Hospital. Wow. Um, hugely stressful place to work, uh, horrible bosses, good uh, surgeons, just not very nice guys. I was working 100 hours a week, I was trying to pass exams on the side, uh, living in hospital accommodation, had a terrible relationship with a girl in London, all my own fault. Mm. So my life is a mess. Mm. And God was waiting for this point. So I go to a medical party. Everyone's having a good time. I go in, oh my goodness, my head. Very brief bit of uh, mental health. Yeah. And in somebody else's house, I thought, I can't stand this. I walked into a side room and turned the, d the, turned the light off. And God was waiting for this moment. Now, here's yeah. to, I'm going to make this yeah. interactive. This is so interesting. God said... It, I mean, it, um, I, I had a similar experience up oh. until, you know, the tent, the tent camp sort of thing. Right. So I can, re I can relate, can to, relate to this. But then you've really diverged. Well, here we go. <laughs> my, so here I am so feeling sorry for myself and my head's exploding inside. And this is, you get to be God. And he's mm. had one, very, very clearly in my ear, one line only. What did God say? Um, wake up. That's good. Very close. What he didn't say, which was five, yeah. five of my patients, because I tell this story almost every day, have said, turn the light on. Oh yeah, I was. He didn't say he that. He didn't say that. No, I, 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 I did. I, yeah. That's why I hesitated, because I was thinking of well, you, that's, that's good. And some other people yeah. said, oh, you'll be okay. No, no, much tougher than that. You were close. He actually said, you've gone away from me. Mm. That was it. End of communication. And I suddenly remembered how much happier I was following him. Mm going to church, got a Christian girlfriend, Bible studies. Uh, oh, you know, we had a great time. Uh, and I thought, my goodness, you mug, you've lost it all. So I went home, got on my knees, and I had just enough to do a deal with God. And I said, here's the deal, like I did a deal with my parents, here's the deal. 
you get all my problems and I'll, I'll itemise them because I know you like to hear about them, including terrible relationship with girl in London. So here's the deal. You get all my problems. And I'd stopped going out with Heather three years previously, as men your, do. Your, I thought the grass wife was greener. My years. wife now. I'd stopped going out with her. She wasn't talking to me, could even have been married. So I said, here's the deal. You get the problems, I get the girl. Yeah. You do that and I'll never leave you again. Mm. And within six weeks, all my problems, including terrible relationship, gone. Heather gives me another chance, which was a miracle in mm. itself, totally undeserved. Yeah. Within a year we're married and we've done 35 years, praise God. Well but what I learned, and this is what I tell my patients nowadays, number one, there is a God. Because I think we can agree, ceilings keep off the rain, but they ain't no good at answering prayer. Mm. Number two, he's powerful. And number three, he cares. Mm. So this is the God in whom I worship. This is the God of the second chance. Yeah. And so when patients come to me, some of them have had faith in the past, but they've walked away. Listen, he'll have you back, yeah. but you need to recommit. Wow. And so that's where the conversation goes. Mm. Yeah. So, so you're mm. not just a kind of a, a medical geek who, who looks at the chemistry mm. and, and the pharmacology, pharmacology or whatever, yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and then whatever gives a prescription. You're a real person mm. who's been through life experiences, mm. in mental challenges. Yeah. And you've proved in your life that um, that actually having faith, you know, as, well, I mean, you're you're here with me now talking yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And how many years ago was that when well, you went through that crisis? Well, at 26, so I'm yeah. 63 now. So, okay. yeah, 37 years ago. Do you know, one of my drug addicts who became a Christian uh, stopped taking heroin, stopped going to prison. He did a video with me years ago and he, and he said, drugs will kill. Jesus is better. Now, I've never done the drugs, but I can tell you that, that life without Jesus is terrible. I mean, life can be tough mm. with Jesus, but yeah. my goodness, without him, yeah. it's awful because you make an awful lot more mistakes. Jesus is better. Yeah. And I, I know you, you've done a lot when you say one of my mm. drug, uh, would you say clients or, or addicts? You know, addicts. Patients. Yeah. Yeah, drug um, addict patients. There's a few of them. Yeah, yeah, there are. If you live down in, in the Margate area, there are some social challenges there certainly down are. there. Yeah, yeah, and I think these, I mean, I started off sharing my faith with, with drug addicts, then alcoholics, and then people with mental health where the Holy Spirit literally says, this is the one, go for it. Yeah. Because I, what I, I mean, somebody once said, didn't they, yeah, Christianity is one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. And from my point of view, you know, I've been that beggar. Mm. And not only that, I've been it twice. You know, having, coming to faith is so good, I had to do it twice. Yes. Um, but, you know, I'm just saying to them, You've been look, born again, again. I've been born again, <laughs> again. <laughs> um, and I'm just saying to them, look, you know, you're a beggar. I was a beggar. Mm. But I tell you what, there is bread. Mm. I've, I've been mm. with you uh, in, in um, mm. Margate, um, and you've playing the guitar mm. uh, and to, uh, singing choruses. And one thing yeah. I've noted is mm. that... Um, the general shoppers aren't mm. interested. Mm. They're interested in their shopping, mm. getting back to the car. Mm. But some of the down and outs are interested in a conversation. Yes. Yes. And the Lord always had time <coughs> mm. for such people. Yeah, yeah, but our yeah. modern world doesn't really have time for them. Sure, if sure. We're honest. I, th I think it's when people are at a low point, you know, it's when you're really low, that's when you look up. Yeah. And so, you know, Joe middle class, two up, two down, two cars in the garage, mm. quite hard to reach to say, yeah. you know, you've got a problem. Well, what problem is that? Yeah. Um, but actually, but equally, yeah. Richard. So I'm going to throw. But no one's impossible. On, no one's going to pivot on on yes. this because yes. they're the very people who really do despise. Mm. You know, not I'm generalising and you're castigating them, but mm. that, that, who, who who do don't like mm. Christians who are out and out. Mm. You know, yeah, sharing yes. their faith because yes. it's unsettling to their comfort yeah. zone. Oh. Sure, sure. I remember knocking on someone's door doing a mission. Huge drive, gorgeous house in Devon. And he opened the door and he was very, yeah, very dismissive. And I was talking about heaven. He said, listen, Sonny, this is heaven. And he pointed to his garden. And I wasn't there to have a fight with him, but I'm thinking, yeah, but, you know, in one day, God can take all that away. He can yes. take away your health. He can take away your garden and you can't take it with you. Yeah. And uh, it, that's why it's so hard. Yeah. And what I pray for people like him actually is that they will reach a low point. Yeah. And, and look up and realise, no, 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 you haven't got it all sussed. And without God, actually, we'd have nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. Oh. Wow, that's all hit me. That some, there are people there who oh, just gosh. literally, that is their heaven. This, but this, it's tragic, I've really. got it all, and yet they've got nothing. <clears throat> and I shouldn't have laughed, but it is something oh, completely true. tragic, comic yeah. about yeah. it. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, yeah, 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 so Richard, you, mm. you've, you've not, you're not a nine to five Christian. You, you've <laughs> taken it, you know, mm. it, it's everything. You're not a Sunday Christian, are you? You, you, no. you feel it's very much part of 
of your life, how, and you advocate it. Yes. I don't, don't, not only in the medical profession, but for Christians to to stand up and uh, you know. Well, sharing our faith. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing. I was I, after uh, getting married. I had it when I was twenty-seven. We went abroad, worked in India, and then Africa, which you mentioned earlier. Um, but we weren't really sharing our faith much. We were just using our medical skills to keep people alive. Came back home, and Alpha absolutely nailed me. Week seven, we were, we were showing the course in our house to some mums that Heather had met at the school gates. So we're actually leading the course. I hadn't seen it before. Week seven, telling others, oh my goodness, Nikki Gumbel is talking to me. Mm. I suddenly realised, oh, how can I have been a Christian the best part of 20 odd years without realising that sharing faith is, is what we're meant to do? So mm. I better have a go. And when I was moving to general practice at that stage, and uh, yeah, God opened the doors. And you, Margate, you were up in Hampton then? We were in Hampton for a short time. I uh, was a trainee GP yeah. in Hampton, moved to Margate when, uh, when I got, uh, got the job. And yeah. uh, wow, he's, he's yeah. provided every single day opportunities yeah. are there to share faith because it's so relevant to people's lives. Yeah. And, and, so, yeah. and you've come up against, as it were, the culture tide, which, which is saying, no, you, you absolutely can't do that. But, mm. but, but legally and, and sort of ethically and the mm. Hippocratic oathily, um, you know, you, you, you want to help patients yeah. in every part of their life. So what's yeah. a, just if you could take mm. a step back from your own personal experience mm. and just look at it from that perspective, what's yes. wrong with sharing from your life experience if it's going to help the patient? Well... It, indeed. I, I mean, and not only is there, is, is there nothing wrong, as long as you, you're still meant to be sensitive, yet bold, yeah. as in 1 Peter 3.15. Yeah. But we now have, uh, over the last 10 years, the science which backs this up. So for years, Christians have known that our God heals. You know, that's what the Bible tells us. We've got all this anecdotal stuff in Africa, India and other, other places. But um, there's a book called The Handbook of Religion and Health, which was published first in 2001 and then a second edition 2012, just had a third edition. There are thousands of papers out there, literally thousands, which show that the Christian faith benefits health. Yeah. This is hard science. This isn't opinion. It's not anecdote. So when I you know, get into trouble, which I do from time to time with my uh, medical bodies, mm. I say to them, look, this isn't my opinion. Mm. This is science. You know? And if you're genuinely interested in patients' well-being, why would you not follow the science? Yeah. And I know the answer. If I was plugging av uh, you know, acupuncture, meditation, anything else, they'd be saying, wonderful, wonderful. That was going to be my question, Because actually, if it's Christianity, it's different. Yeah, well, that's what's mm. really interesting yeah. now. Because th th so there isn't a blanket ban mm. on people bringing sort of elements of mm. spirituality into the medical profession. Sure, and even talking about faith. If they were, you'd be thinking, oh, it's that doctors are only, yeah. you know, they could do it through a computer. They don't need it if there's nothing spiritual. Mm. Um, but they do allow the other We faiths. have a lot of guidelines um, okay. all allowing us, whatever faith, to share our faith. Uh, one of the issues is that if you get into trouble, if someone complains, then they don't actually back you. Right. Um, but, you know, that's part of being a Christian. We know that, yeah. you know, suffering, which of course is much less in this country than around the world, but it's still, mar Christians are marginalised increasingly in this country. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, people, people are beginning to struggle in England. Yeah. Um, but the, you know, the, the, the laws are there to allow us to share our faith, it's just that they're not always applied. That's, that's an interesting point. Mm. So, um, I don't know when, I, I always like to take a step back and, I, you know, look at the big picture mm. of, of the country, because we've, it has changed. You know, maybe, maybe the legal system hasn't changed, but the culture's changed, hasn't it? Because mm. you say that legally you're still able to well, share your faith. It has, but the I culture can tell you, has even changed. legally it's changed because in the medical profession, um, years ago, um, doctors were allowed to share their faith along 1, 3, uh, 1 Peter 3.15 lines. Just do it gently and sensibly. Um, don't upset people. Yeah. And then it tightened up to say, well, doctors shouldn't share their faith unless it's you know, directly relevant to the patient's case, mm. well, that's tight, tightening it a bit, but actually that's fine because it's so often relevant. And now the, the, the rules have tightened even further, unless the patient first uh, shows some indication they want to have that discussion. But how can a patient show some indication unless you offer it to them in the first place? Yeah. So it's not even logical, but you can see how the, the guidelines and have And has tightened. it been, um, mm. because of the, the case, uh, more than one that's mm. been taken against you, have yes. they tightened it up? Mm. Are you the reason the guidelines have been tightened? I would hope not. Well, possibly for the second one. It's, mm. it's possible it's contributed. Yeah. Um, but the, the fact is, we still have permission to do so. Mm. And in fact, my latest case, which only finished in uh, the beginning of September, 
it was quite clear as a, as a result of that that although the General Medical Council, my, my bosses, um, don't like Christians who share their faith, the, the opportunity to do so is there and praying is allowed. Yeah. And I might say when you offer to pray for people, at least nine out of ten say, oh yes, even if they don't believe in what you're saying, yeah. because they're desperate yeah. and they've tried everything else and they come to me, you're not with a sniffle, they come to me with serious mental health problems. Wow many of whom have attempted suicide. I saw a lady this week, serious suicidal attempt. Fortunately, it failed. Mm. And I said, well, you can do it again? Well, I might do. Mm. Can we talk faith? Yes. In fact, I've got some faith. Right, let's explore it. Yeah. You know, and actually, I'm trying to say to her, come on, hold on to your faith. In fact, you need to step up your faith. Yeah. You know, because this is what's going to make the difference. Other stuff hasn't worked. Now, I don't want to get you into trouble, but <laughs> I, you know, I, I've had yes. family members, wider family, who've mm. had, who've had men mental issues and so I've grown up and seen seen you know the impact it has on mm. families and children and everything mm. but um, um, you know in your uh, medical opinion do you, do you think that it, it's, it's dangerous not to um, consider the spiritual dimension I know there's a chemical there's a physiological there's mm. a biological issue that causes mental yeah. problems but there surely are you able to to say, as, as, as a practicing doctor that there is, and a Christian, that there's a spiritual dimension that can affect all those other, you know, you're, you're, faculties. Tim, you're, you've absolutely nailed it because actually even in the General Medical Council guidelines, they say that doctors should take a spiritual history where relevant. Mm. Um, as I say, whether they apply this is another issue, but you know, they, they recognise that there's a spiritual angle. Because they health. talk about spiritual abuse. Oh, gosh, don't yes. they? I mean, yes. that's out there in the media. So Absolutely. if there is such a thing, there is. then yeah. you've crossed, as it were, the, the Rubicon, you know, <laughs> to accept that, that there's a spiritual yeah. dimension to life. I mean, I think the important thing is, uh, and, this, and I always apply this, always do the standard Western medical stuff first. So mm. having taken a long history of, of a patient, I then work out with them, look, do you need medication? Would counselling be beneficial or anything else? You know, maybe a referral to, to secondary services. And then, look, could we talk faith? Because you know, yeah. hundreds of people sitting in your chair have benefited over the years. Would you like to know more? And the great majority say, well, yes. Yeah. What, what, what's it all about? Mm. And off we go. And isn't, uh, so I'm, I'm going to be more, more controversial. Mm. Um, isn't the sort of Western medical you know, system built mm. on, on ev that we've evolved from a blob? You know, and isn't that part of the issue that there, that there is a, you're absolutely not about allowed to talk about God creating us and having a purpose for our lives? Well, there's no rules stating that. Is there not? No, okay. there, there, that may be an, uh, an undercount of what people think. Yeah. But actually, do you know, when certainly in academia, you know, you, yeah. you're not going to be successful if yes. you adhere to any creation model. No, I, I you know, you that. have to adhere to the fact that we, we came through whatever a permutation of the evolutionary theory. Fortunately, um, we're not into that in medicine yet. Okay. Uh, and I might say that you know, we know that the statistics show that at, you know, at times in their lives, at least 70 to 80% of people pray. Yeah. They have some spiritual side. You know, it may be out of desperation, but they've got a spiritual side. Yeah. Uh, actually, which increased, I might say, during lockdown. More people were going online to look at services, more people praying, mm. because they realized that medicine didn't have all the answers. And politicians certainly don't yeah, have all the answers. Definitely not. Maybe God's got some of the answers. Yeah. And so people's you know, spiritual side has been stimulated as a result of terrible, terrible medicine yeah. um, or terrible medical problems. And so, yeah, we have a spiritual side. And actually the medical councils recognise that, but they don't want people to step in too much, no. mainly which just reflects their own position. Yeah. It doesn't reflect patients' position because many patients, not all, but many patients have had faith, walked away, and when they come back, they're so much better. And those that haven't had faith and take it up for the first time, again, they're transformed along Romans 10 lines. That's what you know, the Bible tells us. Yeah. They will be transformed, Romans 12 lines. They will be transformed. Now, so, mm. so, so yeah. Richard, your, your experience has encouraged many, I'm sure, in, in the medical mm. profession, mm. the fact that you've been bold and, and stood up, um, but it's encouraged people in every profession and you've written about, in fact you've written two books, um, one is Christians in the Firing Line and the other is Christians in the Firing Line 2. Mm. Um, we've, we've got about eight minutes or so, let's uh, sure. ju just, just tell me about what, what bearing it has on mm. you know, all the professions. Thank you. Well Christians in the Firing Line 1 I wrote literally 10 years ago uh, because I worked with Christian Concern who were the lawyers that supported me in my first uh, big case against the General Medical Council. And in fact, during that time, the two-year case, I developed bowel cancer. 
um, perhaps stress from the, the case was contributory stress is a factor in cancer. So I had some time off work and I wrote a couple of books, uh, Christians in the Firing Line and God, I've Got Cancer, looking at the spiritual angle to, to, to faith. But the reason I wrote Christians in the Firing Line was that I knew that, that Christian Concern, and I might say uh, other organisations uh, like them, are supporting more and more and more people who are running into trouble for their faith. Uh, and so I met them and interviewed some of them, nurses, counsellors, teachers, other doctors, uh, street pastors, a whole range of people sharing faith at work, wearing a cross, maybe speaking against Islam, standing up against the same-sex agenda, mm. being Christians yeah. and standing on the Bible. Mm. Uh, and what I learned was two things. One is that many people had a really tough time. In fact, everybody had a tough time, uh, but some worse than others, and even never worked again for standing up for their faith. There was a big loss. Mm. But every single case, their faith was, was strengthened. And that's the crucial thing. They knew that the most important thing was not their job, was not their pay packet, even though both of these things are important. It's their relationship with God. Yeah. You know, and that one day when they, when they get to the pearly gates, say for doctors, you know, it's not the General Medical Council or the Nursing and Midwifery Council that open the doors. Yeah. It's Jesus. And, and something else has just come into my mind, and yeah. that is, um, do they get support from their churches? Because it seems as though there is a division mm -hmm. sometimes. Those who say, mm -hmm. well, keep your faith to yourself. Mm -hmm which isn't what the Lord Jesus said, but um, whoever, whoever's ashamed of me before men, yeah, I will be ashamed. before the Father. Yeah. But, um, but that is a problem. It, you know, everyone's jobs are on the line, yes. as it were. So yes. there, there is a divide, isn't there, in the Sometimes. church? Sometimes. It wasn't, didn't come out particularly in the books. That no. I mean, occasionally, they, they, their church wasn't yeah. terribly supportive. Sometimes people moved church as a result. But it was mainly the difficulty they had from, um, from their employers. From their employers, from their okay. employers. But they stood, stood firm. So we're just about to publish, actually, at the end of this month, or about to launch Christians in the Firing Line 2. Yeah. Because since then, over the last 10 years, there's been a, a, an ex explosion, really, of more and more really? Christians. This is this country. This isn't Nigeria, Korea, anywhere else. This is England, uh, Scotland, yeah. Wales, Ireland. Uh, at street pastors, by the way, every street pastor wins their case, which is really good news. Okay. Every single That's one. That's really interesting. Because because you know, I've seen them being handcuffed for reading the Bible. They may well go uh, to jail. An elderly gentleman, yeah. an elderly uh, black pastor, you know, yeah. please don't take my Bible, and, and it's being ripped off them. And I, you think, this well, is Britain. This, what? They bring in, um, um, in fact, my barrister who supported me, Mike, and he'll, he'll, he'll get them out of jail. The yeah. police end up paying compensation because they're not applying the law. Yeah. You know, actually, you, the, we are allowed to say things which are offensive as long as we're not doing it intentionally. Yeah. And I'm um, not in hate, citing hatred. I'm not in call it hate speech. hate speech. Isn't that a bit problematic? Because they're saying, well, the Bible's hate speech. Uh, it is problematic, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. the Bible, unfortunately, is, is still allowed to be quoted. Yeah. Um, and actually, what you're saying is there is a better way. There's a better yeah. story. Mm. Um, so that the street passes tend to win, but some of the other cases don't. Mm. But at the end of the day, you know, who's the boss? That's the question. Yeah, because uh, of course mm. Peter and John before the Sanhedrin, Acts 4 I think it was, Yes. you know, they were told to shut up basically and you must never speak again in this name of Jesus. Yes. And they said we have to choose whether we obey man or, or God. But yes. then that's counterbalanced by obeying those who are in authority. So we need to well, have wisdom. We need to have wisdom and what the Bible does teach us is obey people in authority as long as they don't go against the Bible. And yeah. where they go against the Bible, then, then there is a greater authority. Yeah. That's my understanding. And um, speak the truth in love. Speak the truth in love. And that yeah. can be hard, yeah. uh, especially when you're being riled. And, or, or, you know, it's, it is tough. You know, love your enemies. Jesus, did you really that's have to teach that? Phenomenal. That is that's really phenomenal. hard. But, that's but that's the teaching. And the other one that comes mm. to me, because um, we don't have time to go through all these you know, myriad of cases, mm. is let he who is without sin. Mm. Um, cast first stone. I mean, I've emphasised sin because the Lord said that. And so everyone mm. goes on, uh, you know, and, and takes out of that, mm. you know, don't cast the first stone. But the Lord did say there's something there mm. and mm. then go and sin no more. And that, that's really non-negotiable for Christians because there's is. no salvation if you don't diagnose as the GP, diagnose yes. the problem. Yes. And we can't be hypocritical. We can't deliberately sin and expect Jesus to say, sure. that's fine. In fact, he, was, he spoke harshest, didn't he, against hypocrites. Yeah. So, you know, when we become Christians, we allow the Holy Spirit you know, in time to transform us. But we must... Yeah, but what I'm picking right up road. is not... Because that, yeah. that, that's a cl and put very important argument. Yes. Don't be a Pharisee, don't be a, a hypocrite. Yes. But, but it's, it's the fact that, um, you know, Jesus very clearly said, don't go and sin no more. Mm. And so we can quote... The, can we quote the words of Jesus yet? <laughs> Are we being stopped by that? Uh, uh, which is... Mm. is really, we, it's non-negotiable for us. We're not Pharisees, okay, we speak the truth in love, but we, we still have to say, well, you can't, 
have uh, how solve your medical, mental, you know, physiological problems unless you recognise this problem of sin. Sure, sure, absolutely, yeah. and I think that, that, that is true. And that can be a step too far for some patients. They, yes. don't, they don't like to hear it, and other people. But the fact is, we must preach the whole gospel. We can't yeah. just say, you know, God is good. Well, God is good. Yeah. God is merciful. God is merciful, but he's also a God of justice. Yeah. And that's why he sent Jesus to the cross on our behalf. You know, we have to recognise that sin is a big issue. Yeah. And we can't just say, that's fine, thank you, Jesus, and carry on sinning. So you're not just giving, as it were, comfort blanket prayers. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Because you can, can't we? Mm. If people do pray in a superficial way, you, you want to help someone deeply yes. when you pray for yes. them. Yes, absolutely. Um, when right. they allow you to pray for them. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you're right. so it's, you're living in a challenging environment. It's a, it's a challenging environment, and it's, but it's always been challenging. You know, if you look back at the Bible, I was talking about uh, in church on Sunday, Colossians 2, you know, it was, it was tough then, but Paul was speaking to both Greeks, uh, Jews, and Hebrews, and all of them were upset with what he was saying about Jesus being God and Jesus being man. But within every group, people came to, some people came to faith. Yeah. So, you know, we have to take it as read that you will upset some people. Yeah. But if you preach the gospel, some people will come to faith, mm. and that's what we're about. Mm. Mm. So, Richard, we've got the last couple of minutes. We've yeah. mentioned your two books. <laughs> um, just let's, yeah. uh, I'm going to have God mm. of the Second Chance um, for my final uh, you know, two, two minutes. Just, mm. just summarise what, what that means to you now, at the, let's say the latter years of your, yes. of your career. What, 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 how important is it that God gives you a second chance? Well, my goodness, and, and more than a second chance in, in some people's cases. I, th I think it's crucial because I was a fool, Tim. I, you know, I saw how you know, the Bible says, taste and see that God is good. Well, I did. And then I walked away. And God knows that we can be foolish. And I think what he waits for is that time when we're at a low point to say, hey, listen, I'm still there. So I would just say to people who've walked away from God, just listen, just listen. So, and also seek and you will find and God will have you back. Mm. I say to people, you know, take off the handbrake, can't be bothered, take it off mm. and say, Lord, I'm so sorry, as I had to a second time, he'll have you back. You know, and there's a party in heaven, isn't it? We're told when, when a sinner repents, you know, when, and uh, how, how the shepherd leaves the 99 and goes seeking the one. You know, God is a God of the second chance, the third chance, the 70th chance. Amazing. He gives us a chance, but don't wait too long because yeah. there comes a point when we harden our hearts. Mm. And the Bible also says, you know, today is the day of salvation. Don't miss it. Bless you, Richard. It's been very challenging. And I, I hope you folks watching this, uh, this wonderful interview, you, that you've been challenged. That God is forgiving, mm. but that we have a finite time to respond sure. and to accept the, the gift that he gives for us. Richard, Dr. Richard Scott, bless you for all you're doing. Thank you. And we'll keep praying for you and, and for all the folks. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Christians in the Firing Line, make sure to read both of these books. Thank you for joining us on Face to Face. <laughs>